In the next 72 hours, there are going to be multiple coronal mass ejections from the sun striking the earth. This is going to create a geomagnetic storm that is going to be above what we are accustomed to. And there's a high likelihood that there will be disruptions in the power grid, GPS, navigation systems, satellites, you name it. There is a high risk that we're going to have issues. In this video, I'm going to talk about what you need to do to get ready for it right now. I love the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running I always take what I want and I always give it 100 Don't need a bank, no I'm funded Play the game like it's nothing I'm always thankful for something Don't take for granted, stay humble Now waiting, better believe in your mind Cause it's everything You can mold, shape, find almost anything Hey everybody, this is Praxis. Tomorrow, May 11th, there are going to be a number of coronal mass ejections which are going to coalesce at the Earth at about the same time. They've come out of a number of different flares that have been released from the sun recently, but because they're moving at different uh, rates, they're all going to kind of overtake each other and uh, coincide all hitting the earth just about the same time, May 11th, 12th, maybe going into the 13th. This could result in larger than uh, average geomagnetic storms, which can result in things like uh, power grids going down by voltage being induced into power lines. Uh, you know, GPS navigation may go down. You know, a variety of things that are based on electricity and electronics could have problems over the next couple days. Now, for all intents and purposes, it's kind of too late at this point to really do much about it. I'm going to make a couple recommendations uh, based on events like this. Whenever there's something like this that occurs, it's kind of like a wake-up call to like, you know, the next time it could be more intense, it could be worse, you know, and now's the time to kind of uh, take some steps. So I'm going to suggest a couple of things you may want to have in your uh, prepping arsenal, uh, you know, ahead of an even worse event that you know, someday will happen. You never know exactly when these things might uh, be occurring, but the current solar cycle is pretty intense and it's forecasted to be uh, continuing to be rather intense. So now would be as good a time as any to get yourself ready for events like this. Now I know for most people who are reliant on the power grid, uh, there's so many aspects of our life where if the electricity stops coming into our house, it creates lots of problems for us from lighting to not having refrigeration for your food. Uh, you know, th uh, communications are, are an issue if you can't charge your cell phone or if the towers that run cell phones aren't even working. Uh, you know, there are so many aspects of our life that are requiring, uh, you know, electricity just the way that we've kind of set our lives up. So if you're one of those many people who are like that, it would be a good idea to to have some kind of a fallback position if the power grid goes down. And they have gone down on a number of occasions. I know just in my lifetime, just coming to mind, I know there was a, a very large blackout that hit New York City that, that was uh, you know, a result of you know, uh, transmission issues. Uh, you know, Canada had all sorts of issues when I, I believe that was actually solar induced, uh, you know, that large parts of Canada went down. So these things happen you know, on an ongoing basis and going forward into the future, it's reasonable to think that they are going to happen more frequently because of the aging nature of our power grid, the higher demands on our power grid, and uh, with things that are uh, going on with space weather that you know are kind of beyond the scope of this video, it's reasonable to believe that things like this are going to continue to happen and probably become more intense. One thing that I have here at our house is that we have a disconnection from the power grid and we can stay disconnected. So if there is major voltage that gets induced into the power lines, we can just disconnect from that and it's not going to get driven into our house. We have backup solar electric power uh, for the purposes of you know, running all the things that are in our house. Uh, this this light that's illuminating my face right now is being uh, you know powered with the solar power system that's uh, here in our house. Uh, and we also have redundant systems. We have a whole house system that runs everything. And I'm not going to talk about that in this video because that is you know it's a fairly pricey. Uh, item to get. Our system itself was $20,000 and that's uninstalled. I had to do all the install myself for the whole, whole, the whole house system. But there are other systems you can get that are quite a bit less expensive than that, that could be very helpful during an emergency. You don't have to run every single light in your house. You don't have to run your blender. You don't have to run your, you know, your television, your video game system during an emergency, but you do uh, generally want to have some power for, uh, you know, charging up flashlights. If cell towers are still functioning, but your particular area doesn't have power, it's nice to be able to use your phone so you can have communications. Uh, it's nice to be able to, you know, run your refrigerator. So there are different solar power systems that are much smaller than in a whole house system that I wanted to talk about a little bit in this video. I'm going to start with some really sensible and that is a system that has some kind of a battery somewhere in the one to two kilowatt hour range I'm gonna put a link down in the description below to some that uh, 
you know, I, I would recommend. Incidentally, I am presently testing a system that was sent to me by a company called All Powers, and uh, you know, that's a system that I'm thinking about integrating into our house. I'm, you know, uh, testing out the pros and the cons of that. I, you know, I'm not done with my testings uh, yet, so I'm not going to recommend that per se. Uh, but there are all sorts of systems that I've used in the past. Again, links down in the description below. These systems are going to run somewhere in the thousand dollar range, and that is a that's a lot of money to throw down a thousand dollars. What you get for that is the ability to kind of run your refrigerator for a while. Uh, you can uh, you know charge these systems up off of solar panels, or you can charge them up off of the grid if you have kind of intermittent power coming through. You can uh, you know run power into these systems when you do have power, and you know then when the power cuts out, you know you can run on your batteries. So, so systems that are in the thousand to two thousand dollar range are going to give you the ability to kind of you know run your refrigerator, run some basic things. You can charge up uh, batteries, charge up flashlights, charge up cell phones, things like that. That's a system if you uh, you know want to not really be roughing it. You know, a system in the thousand to two thousand dollar range is going to be something that is going to be pretty functional for you. Uh, ne next, I want to go all the way to the other end of the spectrum. Uh, if you don't have, you know, a spare thousand or two thousand uh, dollars kicking around, and I know a lot of us fall into that category. I, yesterday, uh, we had an issue with. Uh, uh, our car tires and we had to you know swap out all of our, our car tires on one of our cars and that was a surprise $800 bill uh, so you know uh, this week I'm not really feeling like oh yeah I got you know spare thousand dollars to throw around if you got less money and you still want to have something I'd recommend something like this and this is actually something I carry around in my EDC pack all the time it's a small solar panel and uh, this doesn't draw a ton of wattage you're not going to be running your refrigerator with this or you know you're pumping water out of your well but what something like this is useful for and what i've used it for on a number of occasions when i'm camping is that you can use this to charge up a small battery pack and this battery pack actually is just rocking uh, there's four double a batteries in there when this gets exposed to the sun it charges up these batteries and then these batteries in turn there's a little USB port out of this one. This is made by Goal Zero, incidentally. Uh, and this can be used to charge other devices. I've got this little, uh, like kind of like an octopus uh, cable connector where I can plug this in here. And this gives me a variety of dif uh, different connections on here. I've got a little lightning connection, a USB, I, some kind of USB cable, which at one point I knew what it was called, but now I forget. Uh, and this is called a USB-C cable. Anyway, it's a connector that has lots of different connections for you know different devices you have, whether flashlights or cell phones or whatever. And I can just plug this right into my battery pack. And I can use this to both charge batteries or charge you know any other kind of small devices that I have in my house. Something like this is a lot more achievable than buying uh, you know a system that's like in the one to two thousand uh, kilowatt hour range. Uh, but this is going to give you a lot of utility just for just for doing flashlights. Because if your power goes out and you don't even have any light, uh, you know that can create all sorts of secondary issues. You know you can't find any of your other preps in your house. You know you, you're looking for your food, but you don't know where your food is. Maybe you're going to start using Using candles and you know candles have all sorts of dangers in of themselves um, there's safety concerns you know moving around your house you know you could you know accidentally fall down a flight of stairs or something so just having some basic light uh, I think is a real game changer to bring you you know literally out of the dark and uh, into the light so I'd recommend that you guys have something now uh, you know something like this unless you can run down to your local store and get it you're not going to have it ready for tomorrow that's the whole point of prepping as you think about these things years in advance and then when uh, you know days like tomorrow come uh, come across the radar you know for people like myself for preppers it's not any real big deal if GPS goes down it's no big deal we have paper maps if the, the power grid goes down it's no big deal we have our independence system uh, you know so the benefit of prepping comes from doing it ahead of time but if you haven't done anything at all you can still run down to like you know, I honestly don't know what your options are because so much of our world is kind of moved online you know you go to a Walmart and I, I don't really ever see things like this you know you, you can uh, let me know down in the description below of kind of local places where people can get things like this but uh, you know from my experience a lot of these things are easier to get uh, you know going through online portals to you know businesses that kind of specialize in these types of things I don't know what's going to happen over the next uh, you know 72 hours with the coronal mass ejections coming through but I do know that every time something like this happens there's always the potential of either small or large uh, system failures and there's always the opportunity to use this uh, event as a 
you know, kind of a, a flame under your butt to get you up, to get you ready for, you know, the someday when, you know, the grid may go down in a really major way. And again, we've seen that just during my lifetime. I, you know, can, you know, count off, you know, almost a handful of events when there were pretty major power outages uh, down in uh, Puerto Rico uh, after, uh, you know, some hurricanes took out a lot of their infrastructure. Uh, you know, there was it hurricanes or earthquakes. I don't remember at this point. But, you know, there are all sorts of uh, situations where the infrastructure can go down. And if you have some way of having some kind of a backup, uh, it can really make your life a lot better. I think you get the biggest bang for your buck just by the little stuff that you, you know, you get from the beginning going from absolute pitch darkness in the middle of the night to at least having uh, you know flashlights and devices and things like that is a huge improvement and then from there you can kind of step into the you know the bigger systems that like i mentioned that are like a thousand or two thousand dollars to be able to run your refrigerator and you know all, all sorts of different things uh and then you know if you ever uh feel the uh inclination you can step up to having like an entire whole house system but Stepping back, and I say this at every time, every video, wherever I mention that I have a whole house uh, solar electric system, that might seem like it's kind of the gold standard. That's what everybody should want to achieve. But there is a, there are downsides of having one system for your entire house because if any component in that system goes down, your entire house is down. Another way of doing it, which I think makes a lot more sense, uh, is to make a number of smaller systems throughout your house. Uh, the benefit of that is that you have a lower entrance uh, cost to get into that because you can just get one of these like thousand to two thousand to two thousand dollar systems that can run, say, like just a refrigerator and you know, you know a couple like small electronics ar around your home, and uh, you know. Once you do that, you're going to be using less power. If you're running that off of solar power, your refrigerator suddenly is not costing you money. So that is uh, taking co a cost off of your electric bill and you can take that savings off your electric bill, kind of set that aside. And then once you've uh, you know saved up enough to get yourself another system, you get another one of these small, like thousand to $2,000 systems and have that run other things in your house that reduces your electric bill more. And then that just kind of snowballs and snowballs and you can get more and more of these systems. And the benefit of having multiples of these systems uh, isn't because in the long run, uh, is not because in the long run it's cheaper. In fact, it, you know, it would probably cost you a little bit more to do it that way, but you have that lower introductory fee uh, to get into it because you're buying a smaller, less expensive system. And if any one of those systems has a problem and goes down, only that system is down and you have all the other ones that you've set up over time. So you have that kind of, you know, you have all those fail safes. Uh, if you have five systems in your house, you know, it's a lot less likely that all five are gonna go down versus if you have one system in your whole, whole house. And you know, if that one system goes down, you don't have anything. So I started with a whole house system because I built a new house and I was thinking, well, I'm just gonna put a whole house system on this, like a bunch of uh, real estate on the roof, I'm gonna do it that way. But I always did it with the thought in mind that over time I was gonna start adding some other systems. And I've already started doing that with the testing I'm doing on that new all power system. That is now running my refrigerator and it's running my chest cooler. So that not only takes uh, some strain off of the whole house system, so there are, it's easier for us to go through uh, uh, periods of time when there's when there's less sun. If we have several days of cloud, it's a lot easier to get through those uh, uh, those several days of diminished light uh, having the two systems. And also, if my main house system ever goes down, I've got the backup system that's running my refrigerator anyway, so I don't have to worry about refrigeration. Or if the small system goes down, I can always run. Uh, I can always put the refrigerator back on the whole house system. So that modularity, there's a lot of benefit to it. But whatever you do, I would highly recommend doing something, even something small. This is something I bring with me, like I said, all the time. It slides right into the back of my EVC bag. And this goes with me camping. And uh, whenever I go camping, I use this to just charge up, you know, uh, whatever flashlight I might have with me or charge up uh, my cell phone if I want to be able to call back and forth to home. So having any kind of ability to charge, you know, even those kind of small devices can be a real game changer if you're in a situation where the alternative would be that you have nothing. So good luck over the next several days. You know, hopefully it doesn't turn into anything that's an inconvenience for anyone. But if it does, it's always better to be prepared. Thanks for watching. Hey YouTube preppers, if you enjoyed this video, here's another that I think you might like. But before you click on it, I wanted to take a moment to thank all the people you see on the right hand side of your screen. They help to support all the work that I do here over at Patreon.com. If you'd like to join them and get your name added to the list, the link's below.